So here we have three examples of even and odd functions to take a look at. The first one is the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of 5 sine theta d theta. The important thing to know here is whether or not sine theta is even or odd and whether or not cos theta is even or odd, whether or not tan theta also is even or odd. The way you do this is to carry a graph of sine theta in your head, essentially. Right, it looks something like this, and then it goes on, right? But really, if you just consider this area around the origin, you can see that it's odd. Versus cosine, so this one is sine, a very, 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 very rough sketch of sine. Versus cosine, even, goes something like that. Okay, so cosine theta. So sine theta is odd, cos theta is even. I recommend doing tan theta on your own, you'll find that that is also odd. Well, we call that for odd functions when we integrate from negative a to a, we always get zero for the integral. So for this integral of sine theta, even though it looks really complicated and fancy, we know right off the bat it is equal to zero because it's odd. Done. It's really that simple. Okay, let's take a look at part b. We have the integral from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of 5 cos theta d theta. We decided that cosine was even, so since this is even, this becomes 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 5 cos theta d theta. So we still have to do a little bit of work here, but it's a lot easier with that 0 instead of negative pi over 2. It just simplifies evaluating the integral. So let's do the integral here. Integral of cosine is sine. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, so this becomes 10 sine theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so that's 10 times, let's see, sine of pi over 2 is 1 minus sine of 0 is 0, so we simply get 10. So we would have still gotten 10 if we didn't use this property of even functions. It maybe just would have taken a little longer, and it's always good to save time with these kinds of calculations, especially when you have enormous convoluted wave functions with all kinds of trigonometry going on at the same time, it's really helpful to use a simplification like this. Okay, let's take a look at part C here. We have the integral from negative 2 to 2 of 1 minus the absolute value of x cubed. Is this function even or odd? It is indeed even, because if we plug in f of negative x for this, we get 1 minus the absolute value of negative x quantity cubed, but the absolute value of negative x is just x, so we have 1 minus, yeah, well, still the absolute value of x cubed. Having the negative on the x doesn't change anything here, so we, we get right back to f of x again. Okay, so since it's an even function, we can use our property of even functions here. So that tells us that this integral is actually 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 minus x cubed dx. And you may be saying, what happened to the absolute value? Well, now since we're going from 0 to 2, we're only in the positive region, so we can actually drop that absolute value. It's no longer necessary. So a lot of good things happen when you can use this property of even functions. All right, so let's do the integral. This is 2 times, well, the integral of 1 is x minus x cubed becomes x to the fourth over 4. All right, and we're evaluating that from 0 to 2. Okay, so let's see here. I'll just leave this 2 out front. If we plug in 2, we get 2 minus 2 to the fourth, 16 over fourths over 4, minus, well plugging in 0 just gives us 0. This is simply then 2 times, let's see, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, so negative 4 there. So pretty quick when we use the property of even functions. It still would have been fairly quick if we didn't use the property, but maybe taking us a minute or two longer, because then we'd have to think about this, what the absolute value means and how that's different for different integrals. So that actually would have been quite an ordeal. So certainly using this property saves us some time 